So what are you most excited about for this trip to Kansas? Kill the big buck. That's what we come here for. an episode because we were in Kansas. This week's show is going to show you what I had go on while we were in Kansas. It was a great week with Ridge Runners Guide Service and we have success there every year. Um, we've been going there for four years and we've put quite a few bucks on the ground out there. So be sure to check out their website. It's listed on the screen, RidgeRunnersGuideService.com. Right now, we're going to jump right into the action. So what are you most excited about for this trip to Kansas? Kill the big buck. That's what we come here for.
Well, so as you saw last night, I made a bad shot on that buck. It was high and it was forward and not ideal by any means. So we went last night just to find the arrow. Found the arrow. It was soaked in blood, which was a good sign. I was thinking it might have been covered in fat, seeing how the shot looked like it was up in front of the shoulder blade. So now we, you know, it shots in the neck, no question, which always isn't the worst thing, except for it looked like it was a high neck shot, and it's hard to hit the neck high without hitting. If you if you hit the neck and don't hit the windpipe or the jugular, um, the spine is just above those, and those sit lower in the neck. There's a lot of meat between the top of that spine and the top of that neck, a lot of muscle. So that's concerning. It's very concerning. To say the least, that's why we left them overnight. We're waiting until it's light out here, and which will be in about 15 minutes. And we're gonna go after them. And uh, I'm gonna have my bow just because if, if, we did, if I did get him to bleed enough so that he would bed down, it was about 25 degrees last night, so he would have gotten very stiff and may not have stood back up and might still be laying there. So we got to go one. I can possibly, if somehow, were to ever get lucky or some kind of a second chance of this deer, um, you know, he might be bedded and we might get shot at him. But we're going to go track him in just a little bit.
snapping instantly as in the spine or below the spine. You're hitting the main artery or the jugular and they're going less than 100 yards for sure. And so I'm thinking I must have hit above the spine. There's quite a bit of room there on a, on a deer. Must have hit above the spine and went through and didn't touch anything enough to make some blood. But nothing more. In the same spot as last night. It's overcast, it's breezy. Similar last night. Last night it was sunny. Yeah, so we'll see what happens tonight. I have a lot of confidence in this spot. If I get an opportunity, I have to make it count. I think everybody watching can relate to the amount of hours and work, sweat that we put into this stuff because we, we want to do it it's, it's more than anything else. It can be heartbreaking when things don't go your way. But the only way to turn that around is to get out there and work just as hard as you were or harder to get something to go your way. Because when it does, we all know how great that feels and how rewarding that is. So that's all this buck coming through the cattle pasture. Got all ready and I lost sight of him. About a minute and a half went by and all of a sudden, he's right there 10 yards. He walked in behind the big round branch of my tree and he was right there underneath me.
Last night I had a buck jump the fence in front of me. Maybe the biggest buck I've ever shot at with a bow. And I made a horrible shot. And this buck comes in. There was numerous times when he was off to my right, as you saw, it was super thick. He was only at 10 yards. I was going to risk it and try to draw and shoot over top of the camera arm. And I didn't. Something just said, Brian, you're better off to let him walk away than spook him, especially after what happened last night. circled my tree and gave me a 15 yard shot. I feel so lucky. You know, my dad and Travis have found it just as hard as I have. And I get a shot at two bucks in, in two sets. <sighs> Thank you, Lord, for just giving me the ability to be out here. By the way, this is what three years of frustration looks like coming out. It doesn't come out in anger. It doesn't come out in losing passion for what you're trying to do because you're not having success. It comes out like this. And now maybe tonight, when I call Paige to tell her goodnight, I can tell her daddy shot a buck. And this one's going in her room. Because before I left on this trip, she told me how much she was gonna miss me. And how much she wanted me to get a big buck. And if I did, if it could go in her bedroom. That's where this one will go. long on there. Thick long.
him to go over here. And it's, there he is. He's got it right there. <laughs> Ooh, see him? Smoked him! Look at them sweat. That's pretty. Yeah. That is pretty. November 7th, Kansas. Ridge Runner's Guide Service. I'm very happy with this buck, as I said in the tree stand. Um, I'm not sure why I deserved a second chance at a buck so quickly, but I feel really blessed to have it. This buck, I'm extremely happy with him. He gave me the shot, and I told myself today that, especially after last night, that I was gonna be really aggressive and make sure I was very deadly with a shot on the next one I took. And he was coming in perfectly broadside, got to just over 10 yards and turned to start walking in. And I was already a full draw and right on him. And the second he turned his head, I felt it and I let it go. And he ran maybe 30, 40 yards. Very happy with this buck. My second Kansas buck with a bow, obviously. And I'm tickled to death with this one, guys. This one feels really good. What an incredible hunt that really was. And I kind of misspoke during the video. I said the last buck that I shot at was three years ago. Um, last buck that I filled a tag on with a bow was three years ago until that buck. And that previous one was in Kansas. So. The opportunities out there seem to come a little more easier for me than back here in New York. After I got my buck, uh, a few days later I went out on some walk-in hunting land. Uh, walk-in hunting area is what they're called out in Kansas. They're private properties that are opened up to the public for hunting. And I went to one of those to try to fill a doe tag and had a pretty awesome experience. I was hunting on the ground, just getting set up and had deer come in. And not only did I just have deer come in, but a, a doe and an eight point buck came right up to me at about five yards. Now unfortunately, I had already turned the camera to where I thought I was gonna get a shot at that doe when that buck came up. If I would've known that was gonna happen, I probably would've just filmed. But I had him right there, had her right there, and came really close. another doe come in. I got the full draw on her and just needed a split more second to shoot her. And she was no more than 10 to 12 yards away. I mean, just point blank action.
that's going to do it for this week. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was just an incredible hunt, you know, and like I said, the last three years, all of those frustrations came out the second I released that arrow and saw where it hit that, that buck and I knew he wasn't going far. It was just such an incredible feeling and it's, you know, stuff that you can't make up and I'm glad I caught it all on video. I'm Brian Masson with DeerHunterFan.com TV. I'll see you next week. DeerHunterFan.com TV is sponsored by Schreier Outfitters, Muddy Outdoors. Outback Archery, Ridge Runners Guide Service, Scent Blocker, Sinclairville Seed Company.